Hello, this is Debbie Kay with the League of Women Voters of Portland. We're here with the support of Metro East Community Media to talk with candidates running in the May 2020 primary election. With me today is Sarah Ayanarone, running for Mayor, City of Portland. Welcome, Sarah. Thank you, Debbie, and it's Sarah Ayanarone. I know it's very hard to say. Um, that's apologize. why all my signs are sarah2020.com. <laughs> Thank you. Please tell us about yourself. It's a very crowded field. How do you distinguish yourself? Yes, well, as many Portlanders know, I've been involved in so many things around Portland for so long. I opened a small business in my neighborhood back in 2006. After that, I went back to Portland State University to get my doctoral degree in urban studies and planning. And I've been so involved at the street level in trying to make Portland the most livable place it can be for the last 20 years. I actually ran for mayor in 2016 because even then, I didn't think that the ideas that were being put forward for our city really were in touch with what Portlanders were demanding and what we needed to make sure our future was sustainable and equitable. And so we've gotten a lot of problem, uh, promises with regard to progressivism, but in my estimation, things have gotten worse. Emissions are rising. We've had the highest number of traffic fatalities in two decades, the highest number of police shootings in a decade. We have rising inequality and even homelessness is on the rise. So something that we're doing presently isn't working. And I think the answer is more community-led solutions, more civic innovation, a lot more can do it uh, innovate invention and participation from people who aren't usually involved in the decision-making in Portland. And I bring the networks and the expertise and the background to be able to help us make those changes at a critical time when the city, I think, could be in a little bit better direction. Thank you for that introduction. The COVID-19 pandemic and the resulting devastation of small business, city employees, layoffs, and housing displacement will be with us for some time. How would you seek to address the fallout from that, including the reduction in city revenue? Yeah, I mean, this is the challenge that we face, right? And no one is going to be the new mayor until January 2021. So I want to recognize all of the hard work that our current electeds are doing in managing the crisis. The question that I have to answer is why you would want me to be there for the recovery of our city. Oh, excuse my dog. I am uh, uh, commenting from home and I have the family in the house. Um, you know, a return to normalcy is not what most Portlanders need or want. The normal wasn't working for so many people. And I see this as a critical time for us to actually do better on our promises to the average Portlander. So I'm bringing my small business experience. I proposed even before the crisis, many policies that I think are going to see us through, not just through these difficult times in the first months, but the long road of rebuilding ahead. A small business officer who's committed to making sure that our small business startups and founders are getting the resources they need in a one-stop shop, making sure that we're making the critical investments in infrastructure, things like municipal broadband, which we so clearly see would be helpful at this time and help us in the future do things like reduce congestion because the more workers that are telecommuting means that our highways are less crowded and we don't have to spend millions of dollars expanding fossil fuel infrastructure so that people can earn a living. Um, things like sustainable food systems and how can we make sure that people aren't experiencing hunger in one of the most fertile agricultural valleys on the planet. These are things that Portland has been known for, making investments that are good public infrastructure investments to forward our sustainability goals. I think that uh, intention and mindset as this not being a period of austerity, but where when we do rebuilding, we're thinking about it in terms of intensified investments, not less, and making sure that we're doing less with more so that when we're looking at the city budget and we're looking at how our bureaus are cooperating, we're eliminating redundancies across bureaus and we're using things like the charter review process in 2021 to actually streamline our government as we rethink how the government should look for the 21st century. Thank you. Are you satisfied with the current structure of Portland city government? And if not, how would you change it? You know, so many Portlanders have expressed an interest in rethinking city government so that it works for all Portlanders. I know that it's much more 
uh, viable for a downtown business person to show up and testify at city council in the middle of the day than perhaps an hourly worker who resides in East Portland and commutes around the region by transit. We have to make sure that Portland city government is working for all Portlanders. And so I looked at things like the charter review process in 2021 and proposed a suite of good government reforms that people can look at there at sarah2020.com slash good government so that we can use the upcoming charter review process to not only look at the commission form of government and whether or not we need district representation so that people can have better representation based on where they live, but things like participatory budgeting, things like digital communications. Imagine how good it would be if we all had an interface right now so we could be connecting with local government and getting updates in real time from a centralized platform that as Portlanders we could be engaging with each other. What would it mean for us to have participatory budgeting so that we can be having deliberation around these moral documents in terms of how we spend our money and not just shaping the policy but holding our policymakers accountable for real outcomes, which is something that doesn't happen in the current budget process. We tend to budget based on the status quo and not where we're trying to go. And so these are some of the most important things undergirding my run for mayor, even though I'm forwarding myself as a climate champion and promoting a Green New Deal for Portland and making these infrastructure investments, unless we're able to rebuild the trust in local government, Portlanders aren't going to be engaged in this. They're not going to believe that their voice matters. And so they're not going to be willing to roll up their sleeves and be a part of the solution because they're being left out of the conversation. All right. How would you address the public's significant concerns about police and community relations, the use of deadly force and officer accountability? You know, we forwarded what we called a rethinking public safety plan, because when you look at the fact that 60% of the general fund that we have in our city budget goes to public safety, and yet traffic deaths are up, police shootings are up, where's the missing link there? We think that we need to allocate our public safety dollars better in terms of how are we keeping Portlanders safe? This COVID crisis has laid bare things like hygiene stations and community safety hubs and access to safe sleep zones so that people aren't being criminalized for being homeless. Many Portlanders don't know that in 2017, over half of the arrests made by Portland Police Bureau were of people experiencing homelessness. That's not an efficient use of our public dollars and it's not an effective solution to people who are facing a housing crisis. And so we really need to look at this carefully and say, we can actually keep our budgets the same, do more with the money that we have while protecting Portlanders through enhanced police accountability, safer streets, uh, transit access, and safeguarding our immigrant, our immigrant and refugee communities. Thank you. We have about one minute left and one question left. The park system faces uh, serious financial challenges, even more so during the closures caused by this pandemic. What ideas do you have for securing the financial stability of our well-loved park system? And I love Portland's parks. I opened up my business right across from Mount Scott Park and Community Center. And so those park staffs raised my daughter and teaching her how to swim and how to play basketball. And the beautiful Doug Furs in Mount Scott Park uh, are so beloved to my family. And I know that every Portlander is so proud and, <clears throat> and just so excited to be part of a city where we have dedicated so much space inside our city limits to nature access, recreation access, and all the programming that Portlanders value. I'm worried about the sustainability of our parks funding, but I am slightly reticent to go to um, a parks districting model like they have in Seattle. I would want to see clear outcomes in terms of equity and access to make sure that that was a progressive system and not a regressive system. So I think there are about four steps that we can take. Convene a task force to look at parks funding. Do an audit of the Parks Bureau to make sure that we're using our money wisely. Make sure that we're not balancing the parks budget on the backs of workers, but that we're thinking of it holistically. And then institute a participatory budgeting process so that Portland residents can have a real say in the future of how their parks are administered. Thank you. This has been Video Voters Guide. The primary election is Tuesday, May 19th. Please be an informed voter. Visit vote411.org to learn more about the candidates and ballot measures on your ballot. And please exercise your right to vote. Thank you for watching.